Yeah, okay. So um, on behalf, obviously, of the partners, we want to welcome you to the MTR and um, to the important work that we're all doing as a shared alliance. Um, you received a report um, uh, in hard copy when you came here, but what was important is that on uh, the web we have a much more detailed report that goes into depth. It not only tells stories, but it also allows you to dig into the data, talk about the problems with the data, the certainty of the data, and really give you a deep understanding of what it is we try to do. When we entered this period from 2011 to 2015, it was really the first time we did a five-year strategy. We had clear objectives. We had 18 uh, key performance indicators. And um, it's important because this is our opportunity to take a look at that two years in. It isn't only the work that we do. We're very excited to also have had launched here two other reports from our civil society colleagues who have also taken a look at the data, taken a look at the work, taking a look at the challenges, and reported on this. And I commend to all of you, if you haven't read these, to please go ahead and take a look at them. Now, you've heard a lot about this meeting that occurred in, uh, Ju in June 11th of, um, of 2011. Uh, let's go ahead and see a short video of what actually happened there. Juan? Four hours to save four million lives. That's what the organizers of this conference say is at stake here today. What do we want? Save four million lives. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Save four million lives. When do we want it? Now. Gabby is quite simply a great organization. It was set up by people who wanted to do aid in a different way. It doesn't just save lives for the here and the now, but gives those countries and economies, as I argued in my speech, the ability to grow and succeed. It's not every day we give away a billion uh, dollars, uh, but for a cause like this, it's, it's exciting to be doing it. Infant death, infant mortality is down across the board. In some countries, it's more dramatic than others. And because of this alliance, we do have access to vaccines that were formerly available only to the Western world. Uh, so I just want to thank everybody for this incredible milestone. Uh, four hours is a long time, but uh, if you can save four million lives in four hours, it's, it's well worth every minute. I cannot think of a better cause. I cannot think of a more compelling objective than what this conference and your participation is all about, saving the lives of children. And thank you. So those are big numbers. Four million future deaths averted. How do you picture those numbers? Well, one way to do it is to look at what it means in other circumstances. Four million is equivalent to all of the babies born each year in the United States. We also talked about 243 million additional children immunized. And what that is, is actually half of the children immunized in the world during this time period. Now, one of the things that's important is we are both ambitious, but we're conservative in our statistics. And so when we talk about a child being immunized by Gavi, we talk about having them complete one course of one of the vaccines, and these are our three main vaccines. But many of these children didn't just receive one of these vaccines, they received multiple of these vaccines. Now, it's very important to us that we are as transparent as possible. We are the stewards of our donors' resources, the dollars, the pounds, the kroners, the yen. And so uh, we were delighted that uh, just this last week, a major report was released on aid transparency, and Gavi grew from 35 two years ago to 13. And in this most recent report, we're ranked second in the world. And um, I would say our host Sweden is, is, is up there as well, as are a number of the other partners. So how are we doing on, on the goals we put in front of us? So um, we have these large mission goals. There are three of them. And the first one is under five mortality rate in Gavi-eligible countries. Uh, 
And here's where we are as of 2012. As you can see, we're on target with that. Uh, the projections for 2013, of course, also look good, but we're here to report on the results up until now. And what's important, of course, is that Many things affect child mortality, not just immunization, but immunization is one of the most successful and most cost-effective interventions, and it plays an important role in this. I must say the president already talked about this, but here's Ghana who made a decision to launch two vaccines at once because they wanted to do something about their child mortality rate and not wait. And they did that uh, last year, launched both two vaccines, and others have now done that. So I've told you that there are 18 KPIs. We've combined some of them. And what's important is that um, a famous uh, um, a physicist, uh, Niels Bohr, said prediction is very difficult, especially if it's about the future. And um, what we've tried to do here is take a look at the performance indicators and ask the questions how likely we think it is that we will meet them by 2015. Obviously, things can happen between now and 2015. But what you can see in the green here is that for most of our indicators, we think it's quite likely that we're going to meet those goals. There's a few that it's not the case, and we are working hard to change the way we work on those, and I will come back on, on those to discuss that. We also, I want to emphasize, made these very ambitious goals. And I'll also talk about that as I get into some of the individual goals. So the other two mission indicators, 3.9 million deaths through routine immunization. And you can see again that we're on track for this. One question people might ask is, why is it that the curve heads up? And the answer is, is as we immunize more and more countries and roll vaccines out, there is a scaling up of the effects of these vaccines. And the third mission indicator, um, which is 243 million addition children, you can see that actually we're above this right now. So on the high level mission indicators, we are doing well. But again, this is what we said we were gonna be measured on, but in fact, we're doing more. And um, 106 million people up till now in this period have been reached through campaigns. You can see 84 million through meningitis campaigns and another 22 million through yellow fever campaigns. So that's on top of the, uh, of, of the uh, uh, immunizations that we promised. It's also been a period of massive scale up. And if you ask the question, you know, since Gavi began 13 years ago, and you look at every vaccine we've ever done, with the exception of some investment cases that have been discontinued, we've actually rolled out about a fifth of all the vaccines during this year, or will do during this year, and about a quarter of all the launches that have occurred in the 13 years of Gavi will occur in this year. So we're in a massive scale up period. So why are we all here? It's because we share in this incredible mission statement, saving children's lives and protecting people's health by increasing access to immunization in poor countries. Now let me talk about some of the effects that have occurred. This can't occur without resources, obviously, but we have an interesting resource model which includes three parts of a virtual triangle here. The first is donor funding. The vast majority of funding has been done by donors during this period for vaccines. 91% um, of the pledges have been in signed agreements. That's one of our KPIs. And I must say the, the countries that haven't are trying hard. Just yesterday, my country, um, where I come from, the US, which recently has had some issues, including a sequestration and a shutdown, managed to get their contribution of $138 million in the bank yesterday, bringing their uh, contributions to over $1 billion to Gavi. But one of our challenges is to make sure that these last set of pledges get turned into signed agreements and obviously capital. Oops. Um, we've also tried to increase our donor base. We are concerned about the fact that the top three donors represent a disproportionate amount of Gavi support. And so during this period, we've expanded the database. And this is something we're going to continue to work on, which is quite important for the future of the alliance. 
One of the main things that allowed us to bring in the private sector is the Gavi Matching Fund. And this brings in not only money, but it brings in expertise from the private sector. And we have many examples now of working with innovative companies. Last night you heard from the Lions Club, and Wayne talked about their 1.35 million volunteers on the ground who are helping with immunization. These are innovative partnerships that will make a huge difference. Now, the second part of this virtual triangle is countries sharing the cost of their vaccines. Now, if you noticed, for the other indicators, we only go out to 2012. On this one, we've gone out to 2013 with estimates because countries tend to pay their co-financing at the end of the year. But you can see that, in fact, we've had increasing amounts of co-financing from countries. And you can see 125 since January of 2011. An estimate by the end of this year will be 82 million. And so you can see the increasing amounts of co-financing. Now, to talk about an ambitious goal, this goal is set at 100%. That's because we don't want countries to say we can be in the, you know, the 10% that aren't part of this goal. But um, we've hovered between. Uh, 86 and 93 percent you can see here and I must say in development I don't know of any other example that is as good as this is from the poorest countries in the world and when you talk to countries they're proud of the fact that they're contributing as well the third part of this is the partnership with the vaccine manufacturers and we've seen prices fall in the last two years prices have fallen 35 percent for the three key vaccines you can see those vaccines here this is a reduction of cost for the donors but it's also going to be a reduction of cost in the future you can see here that in fact we've had a reduction dramatic reduction in rotavirus vaccine some reduction in penta pneumo has stayed relatively stable and this is something that's important over time we're going to have to try to get better prices given the importance of this vaccine and uh, what the cost is for the Gavi Alliance. And in uh, April of 2013, we announced a new price for pentavalent, which is even lower. So we'll continue to see these prices fall. Um, the other thing is that there's really been an acceleration of new vaccine uptake. And so this is looking at the traditional vaccine that made Penta. It started out as hepatitis B and then Tetra and ultimately Penta. And you can see the time course for this happening. Here is pneumococcal and here is rotavirus vaccine. And you can see an arrow when WHO recommended this as a global vaccine. What I've done is moved all of these down to the beginning so we can look at the number of years since global introduction and you can see that despite some supply constraints, we are doing faster and better with the new vaccines than have been done traditionally. And this is important in terms of getting these life-saving vaccines out. So what's happened with this? This is the campaigns and vaccines that have occurred across the world. Um, Ghana, of course, has on its flag a black star because it was the first country to get independence in Africa. And you'll notice here that they have a star here because they've used more than any other country during this period all of the different vaccines that Gavi has to offer. But you can see the dramatic movement across that. On pentavalent, it's really an extraordinary thing. This was a new vaccine. This was a new vaccine. And um, you can see that at the time this period started, it had already been in 65 countries. It's moved now to 72 countries. There is only one Gavi country, South Sudan, that has not yet used this vaccine. And South Sudan, of course, wasn't a country when this period started. Um, but um, we're excited that in South Sudan, first quarter of 2014, they're on track to go ahead and roll out this vaccine vaccine to mean that all Gavi countries will have moved from the traditional vaccines to the new vaccines. This is an extraordinary accomplishment. It's not just the vaccines. You've seen me show this graph many times, but it continues to be incredibly valued. Look at what it's doing to disease on the ground. This is Khalifi um, in Kenya. But here's a different graph I haven't shown before. This is looking at Bamako, Mali, and the effects on the ground of these vaccines. This is exactly the type of data that we're looking for. During this period, we've also begun to bring vaccines forward that were targeted specifically at women. Obviously, all of the work we do is targeted at women and men, but in this case, some new vaccines. And look at what's happened. So, 
in the short period since we've begun to discuss HPV vaccines and begin to have programs, you can see here demonstration projects, national introductions, 25 countries have stepped up to the plate and said, we want this vaccine. And this is a really important addition now to the armamentarium that's occurring. Rebel is the most recent vaccine we've introduced already in a very short time period. Eight countries approved, six new applications. Again, enormous demand from countries for this important vaccine. Now, there are many challenges as well. I've talked about the great issues, but the challenges of getting vaccines to every child are profound. This is looking at the coverage levels of vaccines. Now, it turns out, if you, were, if you saw on the KPI chart, that we're actually doing relatively well on the first two vaccines on numbers of introductions. And we plan to catch up on Rota, we're behind because of supply constraints. But in this case, we're below on Penta. This is mostly related to large country readiness. And so we have a focus I'll be talking about in a minute in trying to work on increasing coverage in large countries. For pneumococcal disease, we're below the curve. This relates to some country readiness. It also relates to some supply disruptions that have occurred, although now those have been resolved and we're back on track. And rotavirus has been the biggest challenge where despite manufacturers working really hard to scale up manufacturing, there has been a huge demand for this vaccine. And there's also been country preference for one particular vaccine, which makes us uh, be below this line. Another challenge is on, um, uh, on, on DPT coverage. You've heard already that this has somewhat stabilized in the world. And yesterday, Peter Hansen gave a, a, a report to the donors and explained that, in fact, if you look at the DPT coverage and you take out the three large countries, the rest of the countries actually are on track. The large countries have dragged it down. So again, the intervention in the large countries will affect this over time. We've recently added uh, measles coverage. And again, we should see that come up with the interventions that are underway. Equity is a very important part of what we do. You can see that equity is uh, at least the indicator we use, which is the um, difference between the lowest quintile and the highest quintile shouldn't be more than 20%. That's income quintile. You can see that we're not doing so bad on this. But I think this indicator is a much more complicated uh, point, as many of the indicators are. Here are three country examples. Nigeria, a country that has very, very big differences in um, the different quintiles. This is what we're not looking to have. Chad, not such a big difference, but very low coverage. And here's Rwanda, where this is what we'd like all countries to be, very high coverage and very little differential by income uh, level. And so this is the, what we're looking for. Obviously, equity is affected by gender, geography, and wealth. Um, we've talked about uh, the wealth factor. Um, let me just say a word about gender. It's quite interesting because when WHO took a hard look at the gender equation, in most countries, children tend to be immunized equally, boys and girls. But what's interesting is in countries that have uh, gender inequality, and this is the UNDP Gender Inequality Index, the higher the gender in inequality, the less immunization that occurs for all children, boys and girls. And this relates to the mother's ability to get the children to clinics, et cetera. So this is an important problem that still needs to be dealt with. Um, Given these issues, um, our partners, WH and UNICEF, have really stepped up to the plate. We've invested significant more finance in trying to deal with the lower, lower coverage countries, putting in tailored approaches. Also, in, in countries that have the largest inequalities and equities, and you can see that we have leads and a joint lead from uh, both partners to really try to work on the ground. And you're going to hear more about this from AB and from Gita in their interventions. But we have a plan, as we always do at Gavi, when we see a problem to try to tackle that and to use uh, the learning that we do in the organization to help make that better. The dropout rate between DPT-1 and DPT-3 is an indicator that we like because it talks about having to have three different access points, not just one. You can see that on this, um, again, we're not where we need to be. And the challenge there is the strength of the health system, some of the things that the Honorable President talked about. Um, 
this isn't only a Gavi problem. I must say health systems interventions have been challenging, but I think we're in the middle of a new era where um, people are looking at this, the IHP pr program we've been a signatory of, working with other partners, working with the Global Fund. We're really trying to redo our health systems program and target it better. One of the critical issues is how do we measure health system uh, changes? And we've moved to trying to have intermediate indicators that will allow us to analyze interventions in health systems to see if they're working rather than just waiting for outcome measures. Here's an example of uh, this new program that's going on. This is from DRC. These are Service Availability and Readiness Assessments, SARAs. These are done across a whole range of issues. It has immunization in it, but it's really about trained staff and cold box and sharps and a whole range of other issues. And these are going to be done regularly, which allows the government to intervene on places that aren't performing well. And this is an important part of strengthening their health system, is having the data available to understand understand it. With this, we're also trying now with the partners to get more real-time data. You've heard me before talk about the problems of having data that really lags. And here's an example of data that's coming in monthly on reports. And you can see an increase in cumulative number of doses administered. Obviously, these need to be validated. But having real-time data allows us to work with countries to help improve those systems. And a country we've talked about a lot, Nigeria. This is last year, very poor coverage, big problem. And you can see where they are now. You can see a dramatic change in difference. You could look at this and say, well, is it validated? It's not validated yet. But because we now have uh, data on the system side of it, you can see the changes are occurring, which really helps you, you know, believe that this is making a difference. And, um, as part of our, our full country evaluations, the IHME, the University of uh, uh, Zambia, in this case, is looking at um, going down to the district and even sub-districts and understanding child mortality. And if you overlaid a vaccine chart on this, you could actually see these hot areas being places of low coverage. One other big intervention that's occurred during this period is the work with the Global Polio Program, is to take advantage of the, of the science they have in measurement and to work with them on trying to look at routine immunization. This is Uttar Pradesh, and here you can see uh, a mapping of looking at you know, immunization rates in there by polio staff, and over time you can see an increase in, in immunization. So working with other partners, bringing other groups into this, critical to the type of success we want. So um, at the end, the, the issue here is trying to get transformational change, and we have to sustain the work that we're doing. Sustainability relates to really many different issues, having legislation, having budget lines, national financing, political commitment, like we've heard from the president today. Today, 62 of the Gavi countries have budget lines for routine vaccines. We're working with the Sabin Foundation, the African De Development Bank, the World Bank, in trying to increase having this type of engagement engagement, which is critical to success. Here's an example of a country. This is Armenia, 2003, $134,000 total spend. You can see this is donor funding for routine vaccines and a little bit of Gavi funding. Look at what happens over time. You can see that the pie expands and the um, government enters and begins to do more funding. And here you can see the beginning of co-financing with Gavi and the government funding here. But you can see that donors are still paying for routine vaccines. As we move on, you can see where we are today, which is the government is covering the majority of vaccines with some Gavi help. And you can see that they've grown the whole pie for immunization. This is the type of program we're looking at in countries. The other thing I just want to say is that we have a transparent accountability policy that you're all aware of, and we've done fiscal management assessments, but now more and more the auditors aren't just being seen as auditors. They're being asked by countries to help them design better systems, which allows them to do better work, and that's important. So what about value for money, a critical issue? You know vaccines are cost effective, but it isn't only us who says that these programs work. During this period, there have been a series of, of reviews. You can see the Australian multilateral aid review here with Gavi being up on the top. 
You can see here the UK aid review that occurred right at the beginning before the pledging conference, but an update that occurred. Sweden has also done a review, and Mopan, representing many donors, have done a review. So we've seen many outside reviews talk about Gavi and its cost effectiveness. And of course, we try very hard to keep overhead cost load and have most of this focused on programs. So, this meeting is not about replenishment, but I thought it was important to mention that this is what we promised to do in the midpoint between uh, the last pledging conference um, and the end of this period. We are working with the board on a vaccine investment strategy to look at potential new, new vaccines, which will uh, uh, go to the board in, in November. And we're going to be working with the board on strategy, and we hope to have a new strategy in June 14th, which ultimately will be used to help us move towards the next pledging conference. So just to finish and to wrap up in conclusion, we are on track for the big mission goals. But let me just r remind everybody that it isn't only what we promised to do. Because by 2015, and I've rounded up the 243 to 250 million for routine immunization, we're actually going to immunize an additional 400 million people through campaigns. You can see there's some overlap there, meaning that we're ultimately going to reach 550 million unique individuals. This is an extraordinary thing. Now, of course, at the end, as Dagfin has reminded you, it isn't about the numbers. We promised to put the numbers up. It's about what it's doing to the lives of people and the children that are there and now adolescent girls. Um, uh, we now uh, look forward to listening carefully to what you have to say about this period, what you've learned, concerns and issues you have from all of you who are partners in this wonderful thing we call Gavi. Thank you.